Welcome to Credit Matters. I'm Mike Skirbo, Standard & Poor's Corporate Ratings Group. Today we're going to talk a little bit about working capital within the U.S. capital goods sector. I'm joined by Dan Picciotto, who's the director in the Capital Goods Group based here in New York. Dan, thanks for joining. Thank you, Mike. You recently published an article talking about cuts in working capital w w within the sector. Maybe provide some background on why, why we looked at this. Yeah. I think the first thing to do is, is, it's a pretty simple concept, but just to define the concept, uh, when we think about working capital, we're talking about on the asset side of the balance sheet, inventory and accounts receivable, and on the liability side, accounts payable. And for capital goods companies, that's a net positive number. So what we've observed and, and said in the past is that obviously in downturns, that's a release of cash flow. It's a mitigating factor in economic downturns for capital goods companies on the cash flow side. Uh, obviously, that's in the overall context of a negative situation, right, where we tend to have more downgrades and negative outlooks. But this cash flow generation out of working capital release can be a real cushion for credit quality if companies are prudent with the cash flow. So that's really why we looked at it. We wanted to quantify what happened in 09, the depth of the kind of downturn for, for our companies, and see how much this working capital effect benefited, so to speak, in the context of that negative environment credit quality. All right, so, so that's a good, good backdrop. Maybe get a bit more specific. What, what did we look at and what, more importantly, what were the results? Yeah. So in the U.S. capital goods team, we actually follow um, uh, about 120 or so companies. Not all of those are pure manufacturers. So we, we took a subset of the pure manufacturers. We removed engineering, construction, equipment, rental. They have somewhat different dynamics. So we took about 45 manufacturing companies as our sample, um, kind of looking at the fiscal year or the, the calendar year working capital changes. And what we saw was pretty, pretty significant and basically about a quarter of the cash flow from operations generated in that year when there was severe revenue declines, on average about 20% for these companies. About a quarter of the cash flow was from working capital release. And that was two and a half times more significant than, for instance, the uh, decrease in capital expenditures. Obviously, companies were trying to preserve cash and cut back on capex. That was a much less significant factor than the working capital release. So what we found was clearly it was a difficult year for the ratings. There were a lot more downgrades than upgrades. But this effect, this working capital release, was significant, allowed companies to pay off some debt, hold some excess cash, things of that nature, which, you know, in some cases really mitigated the downturn. And, and one example that we quote in there is Caterpillar, mm -hmm. which uh, ha has an A rating, has uh, had a negative outlook at sort of uh, April of 09 time frame. And one of the offsets was that they generated in the 2009 $2.5 billion at the equipment operation from working capital release, helped them increase their cash balances that year by $2 billion. And that was one of the factors that supported the A rating. We're now have an A rating with a stable outlook since uh, early 2010. Um, so that, that would be um, you know, a, an example of where this, this flexibility provided by the working capital was one of a variety of factors, right? The economy started sure. improving. They were prudent. They did very well on profitability. But this would be another factor, the working capital. Sure, no, that's helpful. M maybe sum this up uh, a, a little bit with, this, with one last question. What does this mean as we look forward well, for, for ratings. Right. Well, the, the big question right now is there's sort of these mixed uh, indicators on the economic front. So we don't know. Uh, our economist is not predicting a, a double dip recession, although the odds are increasing in the U.S. Uh, for 2011, what we see is kind of sales in the aggregate. You, know, you, you have to think about this company by company. There are different dynamics. But in the aggregate in 2011, sales are going to be close to where they were in 2008. It's benefited from some growth from the depths of the bottom, but also acquisition benefits, some foreign exchange translation benefits. So you think about the revenues in total being about where they were in 08. The percentage of working capital to sales is about where it was in 2008. So we would think if you have a comparable decline to 2009, not that we're anticipating it, sure. but to the extent that you had it, that this could be a comparable mitigant in an overall negative environment. Well, that's great. Appreciate you joining. Thanks. We'll see you again next time.